So dissociative disorders will be the topic of discussion here. And the major changes in the DSM-5 are really not too many. Uh, and the re reason for that is because the uh, dissociative disorders, there's just not that many of them. Uh, so it's not going to avail itself to a whole lot of changes in the new DSM. First of all, uh, the new DSM, the DSM-5, now reflects the understanding we've had for quite some time that derealization can also be a feature. And so even though derealization was always part of the criteria uh, for depersonalization disorder, the name has now changed to reflect that. So now we call it depersonalization slash derealization disorder. Also now, dissociative fugue is no longer technically its own independent clinical entity. It is now a specifier for dissociative amnesia. I am going to talk about dissociative fugue in these slides, and the reason is because you should have an idea of what dissociative fugue is, even though it's not its own clinical entity anymore. Uh, it is a, an important subset of the dissociative amnesias. And then finally, some changes have been made to the DSM criteria for dissociative identity disorder. However, the basic principles remain the same. Uh, you might also know dissociative identity disorder uh, by its uh, more colloquial and earlier uh, term, which is multiple personality disorder. Uh, but the criteria remain quite the same, and I address these thoroughly in the following slides. So just look at what dissociative identity disorder is according to the DSM-5 criteria. You need to fulfill all of these criteria. Criteria in A is a disruption of identity characterized by two or more distinct personality states, which may be described in some cultures as an experience of possession. This disruption in identity involves marked discontinuity in sense of self and sense of agency accompanied by related alterations. And this is what we've sort of added here. Uh, affect, behavior, consciousness, memory, perception, cognition, and or sensory motor functioning. Particularly these more neuro cognitive uh, uh, domains are new to the DSM-5. And then we've also added that these signs and symptoms may be observed either uh, or both by others or reported by the individual. Another criterion that we've added is that recurrent gaps in the recall of everyday events, personal information, or traumatic events um, need to be present and these need to be inconsistent with just ordinary forgetting. So for instance, a patient with uh, a if you see personality change in a patient with uh, particularly uh, frontotemporal dementia, that's not going to be a dissociative identity disorder. Uh, C, the symptoms need to cause clinically significant distress, da 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 da. Uh, D, the disturbances are not part of a normal part of a broadly accepted cultural or religious practice. And particularly, we're taking into consideration small children, especially between the ages of three and six where imagination becomes a very uh, salient feature of their personality. Uh, these are children that have uh, imaginary friends or that uh, pretend you know, they're playing cowboys and Indians or whatever, they're using their imagination. That's obviously not dissociative identity disorder and we uh, made sure that we delineated that clearly in the criteria. And then finally, the symptoms are not attributable to the physiologic effects of a substance or another medical condition. Particularly here, we are thinking of epilepsy. So not just your typical tonic-clonic epilepsy, but here we're talking about complex partial epilepsy, especially that of the frontal lobe. Remember, the frontal lobe is part of your personality, your executive functioning. And so patients who have epilepsy uh, of, of the frontal lobe can display some of these symptoms. So if you have a patient who you think has dissociative identity disorder, but especially if they also have a history of generalized epilepsy, so tonic-clonic seizures, uh, myoclonic epilepsy, and so forth, you certainly should get an EEG on these patients to see if indeed you actually have epilepsy behind this, because if you do, then dissociative identity disorder is not going to be your diagnosis. Your diagnosis will be usually frontal lobe epilepsy, uh, and um, then in some cases, possibly generalization. So some general principles. Uh, dissociative orders are pretty vague. What they are are an involvement of a disruption of consciousness, uh, memory, identity, or perception. And of course, that disruption of consciousness excludes uh, 
disorders such as delirium and dementia. And this results in a significant distress for the patient. Many times this is caused by some degree of psychological trauma. Uh, defense mechanism here is dissociation and really uh, you'll see it most prominently in dissociative amnesia but all of these patients are really exerting the defense mechanism of dissociation due to a, sp a particular stressor. So on presentation, when you get these patients in the ED and when you get these patients on your USMLE questions, the patients are going to display amnesia. A lot of times the amnesia is going to be towards a specific event, but sometimes the amnesia can even be towards themselves and their own identity. A lot of these patients are going to be confused about themselves, about identity, and there are certain events that have happened. So you may start thinking uh, dementia or delirium, but these patients are going to be tend to be younger. They're not. They're going to score fine on the uh, MF, MMSE, except for they're going to have some uh, some confusion about self or identity or events. And a lot of times this is abrupt and you may see erratic personality changes. You have to rule out substance and intoxication in any patient that presents like this. And the major uh, drug that we have to rule out is hallucinogens. LSD, mescaline, and psilocybin. Uh, PCP possibly also. We also have to rule out general medical conditions and the two that are most common that may cause these sorts of problems are head trauma and partial seizures. With head trauma, you're going to see it on the history, the patient's going to have a wound, and in partial seizures, the patient will generally have a, an established history of, uh, of epilepsy. Head trauma, you can always get a CT, that'll rule out any um, bleeding that may be going on in the brain. Partial seizures, uh, to rule that out, uh, we, we need to get an EEG. Diagnosis for any dissociative disorder is clinical, and the mainstay of treatment is going to be psychotherapy. Remember that these disorders are caused by a degree of psychological trauma, so the best way to deal with that is through psychotherapy. So here's the cog sorry, the dissociative disorders that we're going to be talking about. Um, the four of them that we're going to talk about are depersonalization disorder, dissociative amnesia, dissociative fugue, and dissociative identity disorder, which is also known as multiple personality disorder. So let's start out with depersonalization disorder. This one's probably the most vague. What this is, is it's characterized by persistent feelings of depersonalization and derealization. So what are these? Depersonalization is a conscious sensation. So you're aware you're having this. This isn't subconscious. You're aware you're feeling like this, and you're feeling like that you're watching yourself act, like you're in a dream and that you're not real. So it's kind of hard to kind of hard to uh, explain that, but the patient will a lot of times say they feel like they're outside of their body. Derealization is a conscious sensation of feeling like one's surroundings are actually happening. So most of us have have felt this before. It's the deja vu. So when you walk into a new place, a place you know you've never been before, but you feel like you've been there before. You feel like something's familiar, but you don't don't just you just don't know what it is. But you just feel like you've been there before. Or jamais vu, when you see something that's familiar, you're in a familiar place and it all of a sudden feels foreign. And you know this because it's a conscious sensation. Um Usually there's a le level of anxiety with these patients. They might not necessarily have an anxiety disorder, like generalized anxiety disorder or PTSD, but there's usually a level of subclinical anxiety. The differential for depersonalization, we always want to exclude substance-induced depersonalization. And of course, that's for any of, the, uh, any of the dissociative disorders, we want to exclude substances. But particularly for this one, because it is so acute and because the person is, is uh, relatively um, conscious. So, and, because it's, uh, and because it comes on so quickly and goes away. Uh, so these patients will present in the ED who are on substances, and a lot of them, them are going to show signs of hallucinogenic tox intoxication. And those symptoms often include 
mydriasis, which is dilated pupils, incoordination, and tremor. Uh, and then some of these drugs may show up on the talk screen. A panic attack can feel like depersonalization. A panic attack like depersonalization will have a sudden ons onset, but people who are having a panic attack will often have the symptoms that we generally associate with anxiety. And that's nausea, tachycardia, palpitations, etc. And these patients are also going to be very dysphoric. They're going to be, uh, they're not going to be laying there and just kind of, oh, this is okay. They're going to they're gonna feel like impending doom is coming on. The treatment for depersonalization is psychotherapy, and of course we're going to want to evaluate these patients for anxiety disorders because the uh, subclinical level of anxiety is so prevalent in these patients. But if you're given a, a choice on the USMLE, psychotherapy will be the right answer. Some drugs that are associated with depersonalization, I listed five of them, but there's definitely more than this. So there's amantadine, which we talk about. It is used for Parkinson's disease, for the movement symptoms, and it's also an antiviral. Uh, ketamine, definitely a very well-known drug that uh, can be used during anesthesia, uh, is also associated, uh, has hallucinogenic properties. Fencyclidine is never uh, administered in the hospital. It is an illegal drug. Uh, with fencyclidine, you're going to have depersonalization, but these patients are going to be uh, rather uh, violent, and, and um, these patients are not going to be calm. These patients are going to be the ones that get brought in by the police because they hit their wife, and they're also having uh, hallucinations. We'll talk about that more in the uh, in the substance abuse section. Dextromethorphan, uh, you may be familiar with. That is actually a cough suppressant, and it's used universally. Uh, it's over the counter, and dextromethorphan in high levels can cause uh, depersonalization and uh, has hallucinogenic properties. Butorphanol is a medication that can be given during labor and delivery for anesthetic purposes. Uh, enough of that. Uh, you may be thinking some of those things that you saw in there looked like hallucinations um, or bizarre uh, hallucinations, which you might think of with schizophrenia. And that is true, but a lot of times, uh, or most of the time, all of the time, really, uh, patients who are having hallucinations associated with dissociation, um, they're going to know that those things aren't real. Uh, whereas patients with uh, schizophrenia are going to act as if they're real and have disordered thinking. Uh, that was just a uh, sort of uh, clip from a cartoon um, that kind of shows what happens when you take too much cough syrup. So let's move on to dissociative amnesia. Dissociative amnesia really is the prime defense mechanism of dissociation rearing its ugly face. So this is plain dissociation in a patient. And what it is is uh, a patient's inability to recall particular memories, uh, particularly those that are associated with uh, psychological or physical trauma or um, those that hold emotional sensitivity. So this could be a patient that was in the 9-11 attacks that ran out the building and saw a lot of death and destruction, but they forgot about it. You, you have the news asking them about it and they can't recall anything. And this is a normal uh, defense mechanism and it's done so we don't have to deal with things right away. Uh, you can look at this as sort of a shock uh, when you think of grieving. The first stage is usually shock. You know, you may find out your grandma dies and you go out to the baseball game and you don't even think about it and then it hits you afterwards. This is kind of the same thing. So dissociative amnesia, something really bad happens, associated with psychological trauma, and for a period you can't remember these things because your, uh, your consciousness is not ready to deal with it. And so that's dissociative amnesia. It gradually remits um, generally, it's not something that needs therapy if, if uh, it's not causing the patient any problems. A lot of these patients, however, are going to have comorbid mood disorders. So the differential uh, for dissociative amnesia includes anything that causes amnesia due to a general medical condition or substance. We've talked about these before. Um, this is going to be a CT if the patient has head trauma, EEG if they've got focal signs of seizure or history of epilepsy, etc. Make sure and rule out any uh, uh, 
any kind of substance use. But in the USMLE question, you're going to get a, a, a question stem that'll usually show a history that the patient endured some really tough event. And so that's going to help you um, rule out substances right there. Uh, but just use common sense. Management for these patients uh, is going to be psychotherapy if they ask you. Sodium thiopental, as you know, is truth serum. Uh, some psychiatrists will use this to try to get uh, the patient to uh, portray to the psychiatrist, to get them to communicate what the actual event was. Um, but on the USMLE, uh, almost never are you going to be asked for uh, sodium thiopental therapy. If you get a question, a question asking what's the management for a patient with dissociative amnesia, the answer is going to be psychotherapy. Dissociative fugue is totally different. Uh, what this is is a patient who goes through some kind of traumatic event in their lives and all of a sudden they disappear. And you find out a couple weeks later, a few months later, maybe a year later, three years later, that they moved from LA to New York or from, from Minneapolis to Dallas and they assumed a new identity, they've got new friends, they've cut off communication with all their contacts, they don't recognize the people that they uh, used to associate with, and this is dissociative fugue. So, um, <clears throat> So, of course, this is very sudden, and it uh, particularly follows a, a threatening event or a psychological threat, uh, stressor. And it can last from hours to months and to years. It really has a very uh, variable um, duration. The differential here is going to include dementia. Um, some patients who have dementia may wander off, and they may forget who they are and, and people that they're around. But of course, patients with dementia uh, are not going to score well in the MMSC, whereas patients with dissociative fugue, they are cognitively intact. They're just dissociated from their former identity. Malingering, uh, you may have a question uh, for a patient that is trying to escape the law, so they're, uh, they're um, assuming a new identity. Uh, I doubt that will come up on the USMLE, but this does happen where patients assume a new identity because they're trying to escape from the law. So knowing what true dissociative fugue is, uh, is, is good. Knowing the, uh, the characteristics of abrupt travel to a new place, cutting off communications with all former contacts, forgetting about who one is, assuming a new identity, and the fact that it does follow an exquisitely threatening stressor. And the management for these patients, once you do find them, is going to include psychotherapy and uh, invariably SSRIs for anxiety disorder that almost all of these patients suffer from. But if you're asked on the USMLE and you know a patient has dissociative fugue, the answer for management is psychotherapy. Dissociative identity disorder is also known as multiple personality disorder, and what this is is a patient who has conflicting personalities that emerge and subside at various times. These patients are really, or these patients who have these multiple personalities, each personality sort of harbors its own uh, characteristics and really harbors its own memory. So you may tell some, some uh, a patient while they're having one personality, you may tell them certain things, and then maybe an hour later, another personality emerges, and that personality won't remember the things you told the other personality. So it's like having two or three souls in one person, um, if, to put it that way. Uh, this is slightly more common in women, and the differential here is going to uh, include bipolar disorder. Uh, remember, bipolar one is mania, and bipolar two is hypomania. Uh, bipolar disorder with rapid cycling, and these patients, so you can imagine the similarity is that if they're rapidly cycling, the mania may seem like the one person, uh, one personality, and then the depression or hypodepression um, may seem like uh, another personality. Remember that these patients are going to show clear signs of the, uh, of the mania symptoms, the dig fast symptoms, delusions of grandeur, insomnia, um, uh, uh, flight of ideas, etc. So uh, this won't be present in dissociative identity disorder patients. They will 
generally not be manic. They won't be manic on US MLE question. And so the management for dissociative identity dis dis disorder is also with psychotherapy. And so uh, psychiatry is a very popular um, subject in film. This is a really good one if you want to see dissociative identity disorder. This is an old movie with, with Sally Field shot in the 1970s. So uh, with that, we'll see you in the next section.